we are going to take a look at some of the problems that we run into with Inkscape, uh, especially whenever we're first learning how to how to make these different files. Inkscape can be a little bit challenging. It is different than a lot of the other graphics programs that you might have used or seen before. Um, probably the biggest issue there is that we do have to keep in mind that we're creating vector graphics. So these are going to be lines that some computer controlled machine is going to follow. So even with uh, simple projects like this light bulb here might only be working with one or two colors, but we still end up with a very recognizable image and we can work with a lot of different building materials to create those types of things. We've got a few other examples of ones that are pretty recognizable. We've got uh, Eric Church there. We've got Sidney Crosby and the Penguins logo on this, this picture. Here's uh, Kid Rock and uh, Squidward. Um, all, of these, all of these images were created using the same basic techniques that we looked at in our Inkscape Basics video and the one that followed that on uh, how to finish a project, uh, test it with the paint bucket tool and send it to the laser. There are a few issues that I see pretty consistently. Um, the first one is probably one of the most uh, basic things that we work with in our text tool. And usually the, the first problem that we see is people will make this text box way too small for the size font that they're planning on using. So we've got this little text box and then we come up here and pick a, a larger size font. As soon as we start typing any, any letters, the uh, text box goes away, we lose our font, we don't have any of our text options up here, and uh, we tend to get pretty frustrated with that. The best solution really for that is just to draw those text boxes as big as you might possibly need them, or drag them out to a, a larger size once you get that box up on the screen, and then whenever you start typing your text, uh, it's going to appear on the screen. You can always go back, uh, take your selection arrow, and uh, select that text to make this font larger. Um, you can type in whatever size you might want this font to be up here or you can just drag the uh, corner of your box out and make that make that whatever size you need it to be um, on your project. Um, that problem can get even more complicated sometimes um, where we'll have colors selected but we still aren't seeing anything up here. Right now we've got a black fill color and we've got black text on the screen, but it's possible for us to have a black fill color showing in our in our box in the corner. But whenever we look at the screen, there's nothing there, and that would come with our uh, opacity bar over here. If we lower this number somewhere down closer to zero, we'll start seeing this become lighter and lighter and lighter on the screen until eventually it is completely gone. Uh, Let's see if I can drag that down a little further. Yeah, once this is down to zero, we can't see our text on here at all. So we've got uh, kind of transparent at this end and opaque, meaning we've got solid color whenever we have larger numbers in here. So we want that to be 100 all the time. Uh, we can also have that same issue happen if we're under our, our, fill, uh, our fill menu in the fill and stroke tab here. This, this bottom line with the, the A, as you drag this bar down towards the, the checkerboard, you're going to see your, your text get lighter and lighter until it ends up completely transparent that way. Um, obviously, this is for the fill color, and the same thing would happen with the stroke color if we had one selected. So if I give this a black stroke, that same bar appears in the, in the stroke menu. That can be useful if you're just trying to turn something off so you can see an image on the screen and then make it reappear or whatever but uh, whenever you're new to Inkscape this can be pretty frustrating and not the easiest thing to to track down when you're trying to figure out why your text won't show up that same thing happens with shapes if you're drawing you know, circles or squares on, on the screen that fill color can be uh, transparent if you drag that box down so that's definitely one of our more common issues that we run into. Um, some of the other stuff that we see is going to be from our line weights. Whenever we're drawing things, um, a lot of times we won't have a fill color selected at all. So we just have 
this line weight um, or this outline with with some designated line weight and if you were working with a really thin line before or maybe the person before you was working with a really thin line uh, you might not be able to see it at all I have nothing selected here if I select my line that I just drew I should have a red outline but right now all we can see is this dotted box all around the perimeter of the, the square that I drew if I zoom in close enough we might be able to see it but we got to get way in there now we can finally see our line and if we come over here in our fill and stroke menu once again and look at stroke style we can see that our line is 0 0.001 inches well that's the size that we need once we're going to send our file to the laser but while we're working especially on a larger project um, it's going to be almost impossible to see uh, we've got to also be careful that we don't make those lines too thick I usually recommend working with somewhere around a 0 0.01 line weight this is thin enough that we're not going to have too many issues with uh, sizes not not fitting the way they should but it's not so small that we can't see it um, why would it be an issue to have a line that's too thick well let's make this kind of a really exaggerated line if we make these lines one inch thick we've got a really big box here now and we'll change the size of our square we'll make this a 14 inch by 14 inch square and if we look at where our dotted line is here it's telling us that around the outside perimeter of this box is 14 inches by 14 inches and if our uh, if our line weight is one inch that means that we've got one inch of the line right here and then we've got 12 inches of blank space and then another one inch of our line on this side to make up our 14 inch box well whenever we get to the point of cutting something on the laser the laser can only cut in one tiny area it doesn't know if you want to cut on the inside of this line or the outside of this line or right in the middle of this line um, we can kind of demonstrate that if we come over here and try to pick another another square maybe we'll pick a different color for it also and if we wanted to draw this maybe we wanted to start this square right here where these two inside lines meet but whenever we start drawing um, our outside line is overlapping the the red square and our inside line is way inside uh, our box all that same type of thing happens with the laser it it can't it can't tell where you want something to be unless there's only one place for it to be that's why we use that 0 0.001 inch line at 0 0.001 inches that's how thick the laser beam is going to be as it's cutting um, so that's some of the issues that we have with line weight and line colors I'm gonna go ahead and paste a picture in here so that we can take a look at our next uh, series of problems that we we see quite a bit and that's going to be things that um, that occur with uh, different selector tools and um, trying to break lines. So I took our Inkscape logo and pasted this in right from Google. I'm going to right click and trace bitmap because we have to turn this into a vector graphic for us to be able to do any work on it. Click OK and my new graphic appears right here over the picture. So right now I've got a black fill color. I've got no stroke color. Uh, let's give this a uh, give this a black outline and no fill. So with our standard selector arrow, we can move this thing all around, um, but we can't do much more than that. If we wanted to break this thing apart, um, then we can start getting into a little more detail and take a look at our node selector. Um, so we're going to do our Shift B. Control shift K now we've got all these separate pieces uh, this can work out for us if we need to get rid of some separate piece maybe we want to get rid of that piece okay um, whenever I'm working with this arrow I can simply press the delete button on my keyboard and get rid of any of these pieces if I switch over to my node selector things are going to be a little different whenever I click on my lines I get these separate nodes but if I wanted to delete this and I press my delete button, it's not doing anything. If I want to delete things using the node selector, I have to right click and then select delete from here. The other problem that we run into when we're using our node selector 
is not knowing how to break lines. If we want to break a line, it's the same process that we use to break up that entire picture, but instead of having the whole picture selected, we need to pick which nodes we want to break between. This is kind of like a big connect the dots picture. We can add nodes anywhere on this line that we want. If we wanted to cut this picture pretty much right in half from the top to the bottom, we can pick this node at the top, and we'll pick one of these nodes down here at the bottom. Now they're both highlighted blue. Hold down Shift and press B, Control Shift and press K, and now we've got separate boxes. This side is is one box. This side is another box. If I come over here and click on my line, I can delete parts of it this way. Um, I can delete portions of lines and then come over here to my my tools in my toolbar and uh, continue making my own additions to these pieces. Connect this back over here. Um, if we if we wanted to draw a line that came really close to one of these nodes, but didn't want it to try to connect there, or maybe we're working with one of our other drawing tools and it keeps trying to snap our corner of the square to this point and we don't want it to be at that point. Our snap feature is is this button right up here on the top on the right hand side. If we turn that off, our lines won't automatically connect together anymore. Typically when you're using a, a laser cutter or a lot of pieces of CNC equipment, you will want this on. You won't want small breaks in the lines. If you were to have a line that comes really close to connecting but doesn't quite touch, that's exactly what's going to happen whenever it's cutting. It's going to cut really close but not quite touch and you won't have a complete cut. When you've got that node selector arrow chosen, you've got a lot more control over what you can do with these lines. I was using my, my pen tool that says uh, draw Bezier curves and straight lines. Uh, and the way that works is each time I click, it's going to give me a new node and connect the line in between them. We don't have to have straight lines, though. Whenever we have this node node selector, we can grab these lines and stretch them out any which way we want to. We can also click on the nodes, and it's going to give us these little tails that we can grab and kind of get a little more control over things that way. Uh, that works well if you're trying to make two lines that weren't connected blend together and seem like they were one seamless piece. Um, that's pretty useful for that. Um, the node tool is really the uh, best way I've found whenever you're trying to create those breaks in lines to make sure that things stay together whenever you're doing a, a laser cut project. Things can be etched if it's just a line where it's not cutting all the way through. That's a different type of project though. Whenever you need to make these breaks, uh, a lot of times people will want to use this eraser tool and um, it seems like that should be a great option, but the problem is whenever we erase, it ends up creating new lines on both sides of the, the path where we erase things, and we, uh, we'll get lines that want to connect themselves. We get a lot of strange things that happen, and it, it creates new paths that whenever the laser starts following them, things just don't work well. Uh, sometimes it actually won't erase at all. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but... That's just kind of how this tool seems to be. I'm not, not a big fan of the eraser tool. It has uh, a few a few times that it's useful, but for the most part, you're going to want to go to the node selector, pick those nodes that you want to break apart, Shift-B, Control-Shift-K, and then you can delete those sections wherever you want them deleted from. I think that covers most of the common problems that we run into. Um, the paint bucket can be a little challenging, but really it's it's the same problems that we have whenever we're working with the colors and the opacity uh, as if we're drawing a, a solid shape. Um, if we draw a square and we don't have a, a fill color, we're not going to see that fill color. If we use our paint bucket and don't have a fill color, we're not going to see the fill color. Almost all of the problems that we encounter on Inkscape, we can solve them if we just stop and think. We have to check for our fill colors, check for our stroke colors, make sure the lines are thick enough for us to see them, make sure that opacity is turned up, and uh, double check all of your sizes.